Okay, so this lesson will be about the number systems. So in this lesson, I'm going to be explaining a few number systems we get. So decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal. I'm going to be showing you what numbers can be included into these number systems and how we can convert from one number system to decimal and decimal to another number system. Okay, so if we start with the first one, the first number system we have is called the decimal number system. Okay, so decimal we normally see as 10. So that means our number system has 10 numbers. Okay, if we start at zero, that will be our first one. Then one, we just count onwards until we have 10 numbers. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So our decimal number system will have the values or, or can contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. An example of a decimal number system is any number like 2, 3, 6, 1, 0, so 10. It's 9, 0, 1, and even 7, 6. So any number that is consisted of the numbers listed above. So if we look at 2, we can see, yes, 2 is in the decimal number system. If we look at 3, yes, 3 is in the number system. And 6, 6 is also in the number system. Okay. So basically, any number, plain number we know, is part of the decimal number system. Okay. One thing to note, when we write down a number, we also must indicate in which number system this number is located. So you can see here at the bottom, I wrote a small 10. So that would be the format if you want to indicate that a number is of the decimal number system. Okay, so decimal, let's just write a 10. Okay, next one is the binary number system. By, we know, stands for 2. So our number system only has two numbers. If we start at 0, which is the first number, and then 1 will be our second number. So that means our number system only consists out of zeros and ones. An example of binary number systems is anything like 001010 or 11011001 or even 1001000. So anything that is just consisted of zeros and ones. If I give an example and ask you, okay, so is 0101 uh, 2 a binary number? then that would be incorrect because if we look zero yes it is included in the binary number system one is included zero is included one is included but if we get to two we can see that there is no two included in the binary number system so we know that will not be part of the binary number system okay so how do we write our binary numbers down so we will just write down our number and then to the base of what? So just like decimal had the small 10, binary we know stands for 2. So we just write a small 2 there at the bottom. Okay, so that is decimal binary. Next we get is octal. So octal, if we say the word octal, we can actually derive 8 from octal. That means our octal number system only has eight numbers in the number system so again we start at zero and then count for seven more because the zero also is included so that's one two three four five six seven eight so that means our number system will only go from zero to one two three four five six and seven so it does not include eight at all okay but now what numbers can octal number system include? It can include anything like 3210, 4763, 2036, 147, 
230 or even something like 7777777 okay one example is if I ask you is the number 7698 in the octal number system we can go to the first number and see 7 yes 7 is included 6 yes 6 is included 9 nope it stops at 7 so 9 is not in the octal number system and we don't even have to look further we can just simply say that that number is not a part of the octal number system okay and then again the format and how you write your number down is you just write your number down simply and then you take it to the base of whatever your number system is so octal is to the base of 8 so we just write the small 8 there at the bottom okay one thing to note is why do we add the base there at the bottom is if you take a look at a decimal number like 236 it can easily fit into the octal number system because 2 is in the octal number system 3 is in the octal number system and 6 is included in the octal number system so we just write down the bases here at the bottom just to indicate to ourselves which number system this number is a part of even with the binary 1 is also in the decimal 0 is also in the decimal so we just simply write it to not get confused okay the last number system we have is called the hexadecimal number system so hexadecimal will be to the base of 16 so we're gonna start at 0 and count for 15 more numbers so if we start at 0 then it's going to be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 will be our 16th character okay one thing that is special about the hexadecimal is if you take a look at the number 10 if you are going to write a number like 110 and you actually wanted to have it as 110 then we can get a bit confused because why is it not one one zero and why is it not one one uh, one ten so in order to make it a bit more simple they decided to replace the where it starts with 10 it becomes an a 11 becomes b 12 becomes c 13 d 14 e and 15 becomes f so our hexadecimal number system is actually 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then when it gets to 10, it changes to A, B, C, D, E, F. So an example of our hexadecimal numbers can be anything like A1, B, C, 9999999, D9, etc. And how do we write our numbers down? In the hexadecimal format, we write our number down to the base of a small 16. Okay. Now, let's talk a bit about converting a binary number into a decimal number so that it's just a bit easier for us to read. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at what is required. So, first of all, we can see that this is a binary number system because this number is to the power of uh, sorry to the base of 2 then we can see that it needs to be converted into a number and we can see that the small base of 10 there so we know it's to a decimal number okay so what we're going to be doing is we're going to start from the right hand side of our number and we're going to count how many digits or characters there are so if we start from the right hand side we can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. There are 8 characters so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 characters. Okay so what you're gonna then do the next step is we're gonna start again at the right hand side so doing a bit of reverse so we're gonna start by saying okay let's write down the base of whatever number we need to convert so this base is to the base of 2 so we're gonna write down 2 
to the power of 0. Then we're going to basically just continue on however many characters. So if there's 8 characters, we're going to have 8 2 to the power of. So I'm going to write on 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 5, 2 to the power of 6, 2 to the power of 7. And if you go count, you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's one for each character. The next step what you want to do is you just want to work out whatever the um, exponents are. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, etc. till you get to the last one, 128. Okay, now what we're going to do is, I know we said we're working right hand side, right hand side, right hand side. This is the first time we will be doing from the left hand side. So now what you want to do is you want to take your first number from the left hand side, which is in this case 0, and then you will be multiplying it by the number at the bottom. Okay, so that means 0 times 128. So in this case, 0 times 128 will equal to 0. Then we move on to the next number, which is 0, multiplied by 64, which equals to 0. Then we get 1 multiplied by 32, and 1 times 32 equals to 32. Then we are back following the same thing. The next number is 0. 0 times 16 is 0. Then the next one is 1 times 8 is 8. Next one, 1 times 4 is 4. Next one, 0 times 2 is 0. And the last one, 1 times 1 equals 1. So we've got 0, 0, 32, 0, 8, 4, 0, 1. So now the last step is we are just going to be adding all of these numbers together. So you can just go and add pluses in between each number. Okay, just like that. So obviously the zeros we can just leave out because zero will not affect anything. So it's actually 32 plus 8, which is 40, plus 4 is 44, plus 1 equals 45. So you can see I did the adding together. And then our answer is 45, and we just add the base of 10 at the bottom. Okay. <coughs> Then the next step, or another conversion method, is from decimal to binary. Okay, so here the steps are a bit different, but you will see with each either binary, octal, or hexadecimal, we convert to a decimal number, like here at the top. They all have exactly the same steps. It's just one number here that we need to change. Okay, when it comes to decimal to binary, all the steps, if you want to convert any decimal to any number system, all the steps will remain the same. It's just, again, the few numbers that change. Okay, so if we look at this one is 45. It is to the base of 10, meaning it's a decimal number. And we want to convert it into, I can see a small base of 2 there, so a binary number. So this is the answer, so let's just don't worry about that one now. So the first step in converting a decimal to any number, in this case binary, is to just rewrite what you need to convert. So in this case, I need to convert 45. Okay, then we're going to start at the right hand side again. And we know we need to convert it it into a binary so I'm going to start with a 2 of a base and then going to the power of 0 so 2 to the power of 0 equals 1 so then I'm going to ask myself okay is 1 greater than 45 no 1 is not greater than 45 so I'm going to continue and I'm going to write 2 
to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 1 equals to 2. Is 2 greater than 45? No, it's not. So I continue. 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. Is 4 greater than 45? No, it is not. Then 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Is 8 greater than 45? No, it's not. Then 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Is 16 greater than 45? No, it's not. 2 to the power of 5 equals 32. Is 32 greater than 45? No, it's not. And then we get to 2 to the power of 6 equals to 64. Then you ask yourself, is 64 greater than 45? Yes, it is. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to scratch out these two numbers because we will not be using them. Then simply the next step is to ask yourself, okay, so let's start at the left hand side now and ask yourself how many times does 32 go into 45? So 32 goes into 45 one times and this is without a decimal. So you can actually in, at your calculator just type in 45 divided by 32 it will give you one comma something you throw away the comma part and you just keep one then I normally do this at the side but I did this um, calculations in word so I couldn't do it here on the right hand side I would suggest just do it here on the right hand side but what you are going to do is you're going to take your number that needs to be converted write it down so 45 then you got one year because 32 goes into 45 one times so then you will be saying okay what is 1 times 32 it is 32 and then you will just be minusing so 45 minus 1 times 32 is equal to 13 so that is our next number then you're gonna go to the second one here we have is 16 and you're gonna ask yourself how many times does 16 go into 13 it doesn't go into it once so I'm gonna write a zero then we're gonna look at the next one is 8 so how many times can 8 go into 13 it can go into 13 one times so I'm gonna say 1 times 8 equals 8 so I'm gonna take my 13 and minus it with 8 that will give me the answer of 5 so move on to the next one is 4 how many times does 4 go into 5? 4 goes into 5 one times. So our 5 minus 1 times 4 is 4. So 5 minus 4 equals 1. Then we ask ourselves, okay, let's move on to the next one. How many times does 2 go into 1? 0 times because it can't. Then we go to the next one. 1 how many times does 1 go into 1? 1 goes into 1 1 times then you just ask yourself okay we've got 1 what is 1 minus 1 times 1 is 1 so 1 minus 1 gives us the answer of 0 so now if you receive 0 here at the bottom you know you are done so your number is then equal or your 45 decimal to binary is then equal to one zero one one zero one and if we compare that to the one we just converted one zero one one zero one okay you can note you see here there is two zeros before the first one but it's not yet the second part and why is that because the zeros actually does not matter if it's in the front if it's at the back then it will matter but if it's in the front everything before the first one will not even count okay so that is binary to decimal decimal to binary now we're gonna move on and do our octal to binary okay so octal to oh, sorry not octal to binary octal to decimal so our octal to decimal will have exactly the same steps as binary to decimal we're just going to be changing the bases of the exponents. Okay, so if we look at this number, we've got 234, which is of the base 8, so it's an octal number. We need to convert it to base 10, which is a decimal number. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many numbers there are from the right hand side. There is 1, 2, 3 numbers. Okay, 
So there's three numbers. So I'm going to start at the right hand side with my first one. 8 to the power of 0. 8 to the power of 1. Until I've reached 3 8 to the power of. So 8 to the power of 2 gives me 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. Okay. That is the first step. The next step, what we want to do is calculate the exponents. So 8 to the power of 0 equals 1. 8 to the power of 1 is 8. 8 to the power of 2 is 64. Okay. Next up, what we want to do is we're going to start multiplying our octal number by our second or no third step. Okay. So first of all, we're going to take our, let me just highlight it, our number, our first one from the left hand side and then multiplying it by our first number on the left hand side okay so that is 2 times 64 equals 128 the next one 3 times 8 equals 24 and lastly 4 times 1 equals 4 then again, we just add everything together. 128 plus 24 plus 4 equals to 156. And we just add our decimal base here to the number to indicate that it is a decimal. Okay, so exactly the same steps as binary to decimal. Only thing that changed is instead of having 2 to the power of, 2 to the power of, 2 to the power of, it becomes 8 to the power of. Okay, so now to convert decimal back into octal so let's use this 156 and then just convert it back to an octal number okay so I'm gonna have my first of all I'm gonna rewrite my 156 and then I'm gonna start again at the right hand side with the lowest one uh, power so 8 to the power of 0 is 1 then you ask yourself is 1 greater than 156 no it's not so I move on 8 to the power of 1 equals to 8. Is 8 greater than 156? No, it's not, so I carry on. 8 to the power of 2. Is 8 to the power of 2, which equals to 64, greater than 156? No, it's not, so I carry on. 8 to the power of 3 equals to 512. Is 512 greater than 156? Yes, it is. So what we want to do is we want to scratch these out. So we will only be using the first three exponents okay so once I have that step done what I like to do with the converting a decimal into anything I like to do step basically step 2 and step 3 together so I like to say 8 to the power of 0 equals 1 is 1 greater than this no then the next one okay whereas converting a number system into a decimal I like to first do the first line or, or the second step then the third step and carry on so I like to combine it with the decimal to any other number system okay so now it's exactly again the same steps I'm gonna write down my 156 and I'm gonna ask myself uh, how many times does 64 go into 156 so if you do on your calculator 156 divide by 64 you will get a 2 comma something you just use the 2 and then you ask yourselves okay what is 156 minus 2 times 64 156 minus 2 times 64 so 2 times uh, 64 equals to 128 so that will be equals to 156 minus 128 equals to 28 so then the next one how many times does 8 go into 28 it goes into 28 three times then you ask yourselves, okay, what is 28 minus 3 times 8, which is 24? So what is 28 minus 24? It is 4. Then you ask yourself, how many times does 1 go into 4? It goes into 4 4 times. What is 4 minus 1 times 4, which is 4? And that equals to 0. So you know you've reached the end of your calculations. So your octal number should be 2, 3, 4 to the base of 8 like written over here and if you compare that to the one above 234 is over here and 234 is over here so we know we are on the correct path <coughs> okay so 
Let's look at the last number system, hexadecimal to decimal. So if we have a number like 5e, we can see it's of the hexadecimal because of the small 16. We need to convert it into a decimal number. So first of what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my number again. But now you have to remember, e does not mean e. If we go to the top here, we can see that e is actually 14. So I need to replace my letter with the number 14. I can't leave E because you can't multiply E with whatever it needs to be multiplied. So you need to replace E with 14. So if I get here, I'm going to rewrite my number. So I'm going to write down 5 and then E's actual value is equal to 14. Just like so. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, okay, well, in the original, there is one, two numbers. So I'm only going to be using uh, two, to, 2 to the power of 16s. So I know my number that I'm converting is to the, uh, is to the base 16. So I'm going to have my base 16 written again. And then I'm going to say 16 to the power of 0. Then 16 to the power of 1. So here you can see there's one, two numbers. So there's one, two. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the next step and ask myself, okay, so what is 16 to the power of 0? It is 1. What is 16 to the power of 1? It is 16. Okay. Then all you simply need to do now is take your number, the first one, which is 5, and then multiplying it by the first one on the left. So in this case, 16. So 5 times 16 equals to 80. Then you go to the next number. Your next number is 14. So you can take 14. You're going to be multiplying 14 by 1. And 14 times 1 equals to 14. And then you simply add them together. 80 plus 14 equals to 94. And you just write your base to the 10 over there. Okay. So that is hexadecimal to decimal. So let's take this 94 in a decimal and convert it back into hexadecimal. Okay. So first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my 94. Okay. So this is already the answer. Don't worry about that ignore the answer so I'm gonna rewrite my 94 then I'm gonna start with the first step okay so first step here is I'm gonna write down 16 to the power of 0 calculated so that is equal to 1 and ask myself is 1 greater than 94 no it's not so I carry on to say 16 to the power of 1 equals to 16 is 16 greater than 94 no, it's not, so I need to go to the next one. Then I get 16 to the power of 2, which equals to 256. Again, ask myself, is 256 greater than 94? Yes, it is. So I know I need to scratch it out. So I'll only be using these two. Okay, then the next step, right over there, is I'm going to take the first one, which is 16, and ask myself, how many times does 16 go into 94? Simple, on a calculator, 94 divided by 16 equals to 5. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, what is 94, my original number, minus 5 times 16? So 5 times 16 is 80. So my sum is 94 minus 80. And that equals to 14. Then I move on to the next number. What is 1 or how many times does 1 go into 14? 1 goes into 14 14 times. So I write down my 14. Even 14 divided by 1 is 14. Okay, then you ask yourself, okay, what is 14 minus 1 times 14 is 14. So what is 14 minus 14? And that equals to 0. So you know you did your last calculation. You're at the end. So then you are left with 5 14 okay but the problem is 5 is okay 
But if we look at 14, remember we are not allowed to have 14 in the number system. So we need to go up again, back all the way to what is our number 14. Our number 14 is actually an E. So we can go back down and say, well, that is great. We are just going to convert the 14 into an E. So our end result would be 5 E and then to the base of 16. So this is basically all the steps you need in order to convert any number system into a decimal and any decimal number into any other number system. As you can see, all the steps is basically the same. If you want to convert a, hex, uh, a, a number system into a decimal, everything will be the same. It's just the base number that will change. And it is exactly the same with converting any decimal into any number system. The only thing is your base will change. So that is all for this lesson. So if you missed something along the line, just go back to wherever it is and replay and see if you can understand. Thank you, people.